We must be the great arsenal of democracy. For us, this is an emergency as serious as war itself. We must apply ourselves to our task with the same resolution, the same sense of urgency, the same spirit of patriotism and sacrifice as we would show were we at war. From September 1st, 1939 through the fall of 1941, FDR worked to loosen the grip of America's Neutrality Acts, which barred U.S. weapon sales to warring nations. Cautiously but deliberately, he pursued a policy of aiding first Great Britain and then the Soviet Union in their war with Germany and Italy. In the spring of 1940, German armies had swept across Denmark, Norway, the Netherlands, and Belgium. In June, France collapsed. Suddenly, Britain stood alone. FDR responded by increasing military spending and supporting a peacetime draft. He arranged a deal to give Britain 50 aged American destroyers in exchange for leases to British bases in the Atlantic. In December 1940, having received sobering news from Winston Churchill that Britain was nearly bankrupt and can no longer pay for U.S. weapons and supplies, Roosevelt declared America must be the great arsenal of democracy. He continued selling Britain arms despite warnings that America's own military was under-equipped and put forth a proposal to lend or lease war materials to the British. At every step, FDR had to contend with deep-seated American fears of involvement in the war. He also had to manage a growing crisis in the Pacific, where Japan was expanding its empire into China and threatening Southeast Asia. These twin crises put Roosevelt's intellectual and political skills to a stern test. FDR sometimes stretched the limits of executive power to respond to this extraordinary situation. Critics charged he exceeded those limits. At this time, when the world is threatened by forces of destruction, it is my resolve and yours to build up our armed defenses. 